Search Hawaii, where food meets culture, is brought to you by Grand Wailea, a Waldorf Astoria resort on Maui. We live to create extraordinary lifetime memories with transportation provided by Hawaiian Airlines. I'm Mike Lafaro, and I'm from Block Island, Rhode Island. Kainoa Horkajo from the island of Maui. I'm a professional chef. I'm a student of the culture. Mike and I met at the Grand Wailea working and just hit it off. I love anything that has to do with the oceans. Love spending time in the mountains, getting into the ocean, all of it. Kainoa had this great idea to do some dinners based on the Kaolana Mahina. I thought it was an awesome idea. We went on adventures up into the mountain, down to the ocean, and really just started connecting with that. So I do what I do, Kainoa does what he does, and see how that translates to a plate. Guided by the moon, but with a modern twist. It's the ultimate way to connect to the food. It's a coming together of food and culture. On this episode of Search Hawaii, we're on the island of Maui, where Chef Mike and Kainoa will search for ingredients to create a one-of-a-kind dinner based on the Hawaiian moon calendar. We're in the month of Velo in the Hawaiian moon calendar. The ocean is calming down. Chef Mike and Kainoa are going to search for a delicacy. They'll have to be cautious, but the rewards are delicious. We're in the time of the year right now in the month of Velo, coming into Iki Iki. It's sort of coming out of spring and into summertime or out of the wet into the dry season. The ocean is calming down, the air is getting warmer and more humid, and we're gonna get in the ocean right in the shallows and look for something that you normally try and Looking steer good, very clear awesome. of. Right on, man. Vana hunting today. Vana time. Let's do it. In Hawaii, when people think about vana, it's something you wanna steer clear of. But when you think about uni, most people know uni from the sushi bar. It's something that's a delicacy. And nobody Perfect. knows how to gather this thing safely free? better than my boy out? Kihei. He Small comes from a long line of Hawaiian fishermen, and he's got some old school country technology to be able to harvest this delicacy. Where'd you learn to make this thing? Man? My grandfather taught me how, how to make a vana basket. I've heard about these vana baskets before, uh, but never actually got to use one. So I'm really excited to see how it goes, and Kihei is explaining to us how it's going to work. So the thing just uh, floats like this. this, so this part is submerged in the water. Yeah, so what you get is your gallons, and this will be a float to keep this afloat. Yeah. Kihei's vana trap that his grandfather showed him how to make is just, you can tell it's really well thought out. The basket is the thing that holds the vana once we get it, but we can't just grab it with our hands. So Kihei shows us this cool little contraption he makes from wire hangers that his grandpa showed him. And that's how we, we scoop the vana off the bottom of the seafloor. Yeah, let's get this bugger in the water and go get some vana. Yeah, yeah man, let's do it. Vana, vana for dinner. The spot Kihei takes us to is his favorite spot to gather vana. And you know, vana is one of those things you just, you want to stay away from. It's like the angry porcupine of the ocean. Kihei goes down a little bit and finds the first one, pulls it up, gets it into the basket and calls us over. We get over to where Kihei is and we see just a bunch of them in this, in this place in the, in the reef. So we start going down for them, you know, hooking them up, pulling them out and getting them into the basket. Once you negotiate them out of the little spot that they're in, you get them into the, the little the hook thing and you've got to get them into the basket. But at that point, you know, if they get pushed out of the basket, they start floating down through the ocean and it's just this spiky, scary thing floating around. Me, Kihei, and Mike are in there and they're floating at us. We're trying to get them into the basket without getting hit. The 
hanger's pretty cool. I went for the tongs because, you know, as a chef, that's like an extension of my hand, that and a saucing spoon. They're like two hands. Vana is a traditional food source. It's a kupuna, it's an ancestor of ours. And as such, it, it should be treated like other food sources with respect. We've filled up a, a good amount of the basket. We've got enough that we need for dinner. So it's time to start getting out. The part we want is inside the body of the vana, past all of the spikes. And so this, this basket that Kihei has, we shake it from side to side the vana rolls back and forth and all the spikes break off so we can actually handle it with our hands. For presentation wise, you'd like to keep the spikes on so it's just a lot more hazardous. Um, so it's really cool to see this technique. I'll probably be using it in the future for sure. After rolling the vana back and forth, we're able to handle it with our hands. Kihei shows us how to find a nice sharp rock on the beach, crack the shell open, pull the teeth out so we can get to the lobes on the inside. And you'll get all that stuff right there. The yellow stuff is what you want. Fresh vana, like right out of the water, is just so sweet and salty like the ocean and almost a little bit floral as well. Um, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's so good, so sweet, but it's fresh, huh? nice stuff. We had a great time grabbing Vanna in the ocean with Kihei. Uh, we got that ready to go. Now it's time I'm gonna take Mike to an amazing place and meet up with some friends. We had a great time with Kihei gathering Vanna. Now we're headed all the way to the other side of the island on the long and windy road to Hana to meet up with some great friends in a really special place. We have the Vana for the dinner and now, um, you know, I'm thinking I need something else kind of unique. Um, so we're gonna head out to see Kainoa's friends on the east side. We get out to Ke'anai, a truly Hawaiian place, to meet up with my friend Napua. The Hueu Ohana have been in this land area since time immemorial, and she's going to help us with the search. This is Chef Mike. Aloha. Hi, Mike. Chef. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you we as meet well. Napua, and I'm super excited to see what they have growing on their family's land and see what we could use for the dinner. Anytime you jump into a mule to start your journey, you know you're in for a good time. This is the part that Mike and I live for. We get to go rambling through the bushes, uh, in and out of the mud and, and the water to, to find this uh, pohole patch. Oh yeah, pohole patch. Perfect. Yeah. This is our uh, pohole forest, so to say. Um, and there are oh, yeah. like sort of established trails already. You know, you can kind of pohole is a yeah. type of fiddlehead uh, fern, and it, it, nothing says spring and, and, and new life more than, than something like that, than the kupu, than the unfurling of the fern. The younger shoots um, more down towards the center. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit older shoots towards the top, but still, um, you know, both edible. Pohole is one of those items as a chef that's just so beautiful. You know, it's a sign of, it's just a sign of spring, of regrowth. It's just a really fun ingredient for a chef. We're picking all this pohole and pohole grows along water courses and you can feel the water so nice and fresh. Napua says that actually the source of the water, there's something else that might be really awesome to pick. Look at this pond. Yeah, this is um, this pond is fed by Ohia Spring, mm. and so um, Napua takes us to her auntie the Janet's house, that, a place uh, I've always Kanoa. looked at and been like, oh my God, this looks like heaven. Who who lives there? It's right at the the head of this spring, and the water coming out is just pristine and clear and clean and cold, 
and in these old taro patches, they're now growing some watercress. In ancient times, uh, 70 lo'i from the head of the spring there all the way down to the ocean. 70 taro patches from 70 here down to the ocean. 70 terraced patches down to the ocean. Wow. Water from the gods, huh? Yes. It's just beautiful and it just looks so healthy and you can just tell it's happy, happy watercress. So if you guys uh, want to come down, we can pull some watercress for your dinner. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be yeah. great. Nopo mentioned that Auntie said we could take some, uh, so we get down there really carefully to, to gather some fresh, amazing watercress. And just, Mike, look at this. It's so nice, man. I mean, you can do a lot with this watercress. It's killer and it's good. I tasted a piece. It's so good. Okay. Yeah, it's happy watercress for sure. Happy watercress. As a chef, watercress is brilliant, just raw, as a slight peppery, almost slightly bitter as well, green. Uh, but then it also serves, sautés or stir fries really, really well. We've got our pohole, we've got our watercress. Nopua says that the vai, the water from this area, also feeds some taro patches. She's gonna take us down there to see what we can find. We've gathered some amazing greenery, the pohole, the watercress, and now Nopua takes us down to the Lo'ikalo, mm. this amazing community site where they're raising taro. This is Lanakila. Hey, Lanakila, this is Kainoa. And Mike. Down at the Lo'ikalo, Nopua introduces us to Lanakila, one of the younger generations of Aina warriors protecting the land. Uh, working in the taro patches and really working to preserve this ancient lifestyle that is all dependent upon the fresh flow of water into these patches. Um, another sort of issue that we have in upkeeping kalo and maintaining this um, lifestyle are the apple snails. Mm. And I can't even see the bottom of the taro patch, but if you just sort of fish in here for a little while, um, you'll oh, wow. pull um, wow. these golden apple snails which are an invasive species and uh, latch onto the root and sort of compromise the, the kalo itself. Uh -huh. um, you know, These snails are happens. eating the taro that we are trying to harvest. And not only that, they make the taro more susceptible to pocket rotten bacteria. Um, so initially they were brought in for a pest to profit uh, program, but they ended up you know, causing a lot of implications to the kalo. The snails were brought in to be an edible food source at one point I learned. So I'm like, that's it, that's the secret ingredient. It's an invasive resource. Let's eat them up, let's eat them all. These things are a huge problem, uh, way bigger than I thought. I mean, they are everywhere. <laughs> you can just scoop them up. Yeah, you can kind of just. Uh... Wow. Wow. Wow, these are so invasive. The sheer amount of apple snails that you saw and understanding from Lani Kila that this was actually was under control at that point was just absolutely shocking. Okay, so chewy, delicious. These snails are a huge pest in the taro patches, but they're snails, it's escargot. And this is where Mike gets to go back to his formal culinary training and do something really amazing. As a chef here, immediately go to escargot, it's snails, so it's escargot, you know, it's like the French training kicks in. We're picking these snails out of the mud, and you know, they live in mud, so uh, they need to be purged, they gotta be cleaned, and, and Mike knows also, they gotta be cooked correctly. The snails are one of those foods that you have to just put a lot of TLC into preparing. So you just, it's one of those, you gotta be really, really careful. We've only been in there a short time and we've already picked a bunch, barely made a dent in the problem in this place. Now it's time to get out, we got enough for dinner, head home and start cooking. So we have our vana for the dinner, we got beautiful pohole, watercress and, and apple snails from Kay and I, so I'm, I'm ready to hit the kitchen.
We've got vanna, we've got apple snails, I mean, crazy stuff. And so this is where Mike's cooking prowess comes into effect. I'm really excited to see what he does. I'm cooking in my own home for this dinner. I'm really excited for the guests to come and experience that. Our first dish is a vanna and apple snail uh, carbonara. And our ingredients are vanna, our apple snails, applewood smoked bacon, sliced garlic and shallots, Parmesan cheese, taro that's been boiled, heavy cream, lemon, egg yolks, and chiffonade parsley. I can't stress enough the precautions you have to take with apple snails, making sure you cook them properly. These have been purged in fresh water for two days, changing the water every couple of hours, and then boiled for at least five minutes. I pulled some vana aside because I want to have this idea to use the vana as actually the bowl to serve the carbonara in. First step is we're going to put some gloves on and uh, start cleaning. So there's really not any of the, the, the sharp, poisonous ones on the bottom, so you can kind of push those aside if you're wearing gloves. We're going to take the bottom of a spoon and tap lightly around the mouth of the vana, and it's very soft in there, so it'll just poke right through. And we're going to take our finger and kind of peel back the shell, breaking it, being very careful. You'll feel little almost like bridges in there that you can collapse with your finger and you'll just peel those little pieces of shell off. Then we're just going to scoop out with a spoon very gently the, basically the mouth that's in there. Next we're going to take some tongs and do the same technique that Kihei showed us and we're going to just shake the vana in some salted water. Next, we're going to take a small spoon, and we're going to scrape in between the row that's inside and get all the innards out. We're going to shake it again in the salted water. So we're just going to be a process of shaking and cleaning until there's nothing left in the vana but the, the five lobes. Once the vana is clean, we're going to take our glove off and then peel the lobes off of the shell with our finger. We're going to take our small spoon and we're going to use that to scoop the uni out into a little strainer. And we're going to use that, just dip it in some salted water just to clean off any uh, residual uh, innards that are still on there. Once you have all your vana cleaned, you're going to put them in a bowl and keep them ice cold until you're ready to serve them. Once our vana shells are clean, we're going to place them on a plate and those are going to be our bowls for the carbonara. Now that our vana bowls are ready to go, we're going to cook pasta until it's al dente. We're going to render our bacon till crisp, add the garlic and shallots, add the heavy cream, add the taro, combine the pasta and that sauce in a bowl, finish with Parmesan cheese, lemon zest, egg yolk, chiffonade parsley. The last step is we're going to fold some vana into the pasta dish and then top with a little piece of vana. Presenting something in a vana shell is just so shocking, ooh, you know, um, it just has that awe factor. For our second dish, we're going to do a pojole and watercress stir fry with pork belly. The ingredients are watercress, pojole fern shoots that have been blanched, ginger, garlic, and shallot that's been chopped, shaved onions and chopped green onions, some sea asparagus, and a vinaigrette of shoyu, rice wine vinegar, and ginger. We're going to top all the ingredients with a pork belly that has been brined for 24 hours and then sous vide at 72 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. For our pojole watercress stir fry, first step is a hot pan, hot oil. We're going to sweat our garlic, ginger, and shallot. Next, we're going to add our pojole and stir fry, then add our watercress. Combine that in with the remaining ingredients in a bowl off the heat. We're going to season this to taste with salt, pepper, and a little bit of fish sauce. Allow that mixture to marinate for about an hour. To finish our pojole and watercress stir fry, we're going to put it on a platter, slice our pork belly, and serve. Hey, you guys. Oh, Hi. Oh, I know. Dinner's ready. People are starting to arrive. I'm bummed Kihei can't make it, but that's more vana for us. And the exciting thing is that the dinner's at Mike's house, so it's in his home court. Guests are here, dinner's almost ready. I'm so looking forward to everyone eating at my home. Alrighty guys, so this is a 
apple snail, taro, carbonara with vana. Oh, that is nuts, Mike. <laughs> Bad. Yeah, really good. You know, I've never had it. apples and <laughs> apple snails and, and collo together. We just need to pick bigger vana next time so I, I can have a bigger bowl. <laughs> really, really good for my first time eating apple snails. It's definitely good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it goes really nicely. I, I'm, I have no idea that I'm eating apple snails. So, <laughs> for my entire life, I've been entirely. Yeah. Grossed out by apple snails, but he did it. He did it justice, and um, it was really good. Alrighty, guys. So this is the pojole and watercress uh, stir fry, and on top is pork belly. That's a sous vide for 24 hours. Wow. Awesome. Enjoy. It's awesome. Good texture. Good flavor. The meat is cooked perfect too. Mm. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Bro. It's always easy as a chef. Um, when the ingredients are top notch to cook them. So thank you for that. And you're welcome. Thank you so much for preparing it for us. So pojole is sort of my main steak uh, with it being uh, a pojole forest in my backyard. It was so delicious. I can't wait to sort of try and replicate it at home myself. Thank you for watching. You can find Chef Mike's recipes online at searchhawaiitv.com. Aloha. Search Hawaii, where food meets culture, is brought to you by Grand Wailea, a Waldorf Astoria resort on Maui. We live to create extraordinary lifetime memories. With transportation provided by Hawaiian Airlines.